You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hi, folks. Welcome to show 181 of On the Trail with Kevin and some guy over here who's kind of going off into boop land. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, as we said, welcome uh, Jeepers and non-Jeepers and just in general, anybody that's listening. It's funny you said non-Jeepers, but we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. So anyhow, um, show 181, as we said, we're yep. closing in on 200. 200. 200. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Um, with 24 shows a year. Yeah, we will make it this year. I hope so. Oh, mathematating. Bonus show. Bonus show. <laughs> okay. So anyways. He's playing with a board. I, I'm Kevin, the engineer, <laughs> one who reads instructions, which will come into play here a little bit later. Yes. Particularly with the conversation we were having right before he did hit the record button. <laughs> I'm like, I got to boop this. Uh, <laughs> boop this and uh, we'll generally follow those instructions unless I have an ulterior motive. Which happens more often than not. And I am Scott. I'm the slapstick button pusher over here, sitting here going boopity boop 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 And while I won't read instructions, but I will use YouTube, we'll get to that in a minute, yeah. we'll also uh, talk about how the fact that I forgot what I was supposed to do at the beginning of the show, but while we will share what works for us and what didn't, it's always up to you to do your research, read the instructions, not unlike me, and please follow them. Please follow them. Um, <laughs> It's been a very, very interesting week. Uh, a lot of fun things have happened. Uh-huh. Um, I'm back I, at work. Yeah, I was going to say the biggest one being. Yes, I'm back in the work, work field doing what I love. Yes, automotive parts again. Yes, yes. Just at the collision center. Yay, Bandu Boutique. Yes, but you know what? Work with what you got and what you know. Absolutely. Um, and it seems to be a pretty nice gig for Scott. I've mm-hmm. seen him happier than he's been in a while, and his checkbook has been back there giving the little applause all the yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, it, it Hold your been, pocket open. It hasn't been the... Or the... No. No, but when he opens a, his wallet... <laughs> I get to hit four buttons at time. Wait, three. I can't three. math well. He cannot. He One, cannot. two, Earnhardt, four, Wallace. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so. So, anywho. Welcome to this Jeep show. Yes, well, you know, Scott and uh, Autumn mm-hmm. uh, have been running around uh, telling the world that, and quite truthfully, their Jeep yes. is a GPW. No. Ford. Yes. Okay. <laughs> their Jeep is a Ford. <laughs> This uh, is what happens when you have nine conversations before you start recording. Yeah, and it's actually pretty fun because yeah. it is a Ford-built mm-hmm. GPW, which is a virtual but not perfect duplicate of the Willys MB. Mm-hmm. It's a 1942, for those of you that are new to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, saw military and combat. It actually saw military combat, we believe, in the European theater, mm-hmm. although they didn't clarify whether it was the Pacific or the... Um, European. Still waiting on that letter. Yep. Um, but it, it literally did go over and apparently, and again, we've got to put the, the kind of underline apparently, um, got brought back as one of the few items that wasn't scrapped in theater mm-hmm. and, for whatever reason and then sold on the uh, surplus market. Yeah. And then languished around in various owners in various farm private roles, but never yeah. registered. Mm-hmm. from what they can find. And we've told the story before about Scott going in with a number, thinking it was a VIN, and them going, no, it's a trailer. No, yeah. it's this. No, it's that. Uh, <laughs> it, was until, a, it was a 73 window bagel at once. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so so uh, once uh, once he was clear with them that it was, in fact, a serial number. I had to bring, I had to drive that thing down there. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, normally they would let you do a tracing of the number, too, but it's always yeah. good to give them the real thing. Mm-hmm. They did a FOIA request back to uh, Army Archives mm-hmm. and found out that, yes, in fact, was a 1942 Ford-built um, GPW, because that's how they code the, them, but which was vertical, virtually identical in all ways, should, had to be parts exchangeable between the Kaiser Willys, mm-hmm. uh MBs and right. the Ford GPW. Uh, ex- externally and even internally, you look at it because it has a Willys engine in it. Willys mm-hmm. manufactured all the engines from what history I was able to dig up. Um, but Ford put the bodies, you know, made the bodies, the frames, put them together. Uh, they were all early Dana axles, same transmission, that kind of stuff. Yep. Except the key, for the Ford shift knob. 
Yep, yeah. There's some little, little, little subtle differences that mm-hmm. Henry just had to differentiate himself. <laughs> and those historians among you probably have read these stories that there was a little, there, there was no love lost between uh, William Kaiser, I believe is his name, or whatever his name was, uh, and uh, and Henry Ford. Yeah, and Henry was publicly stated, well, I don't want the soldiers to confuse any problems with those Kaiser, you know, built Jeeps and mine. I want them to know that yeah. the good ones were built by, you know, uh-huh. Ford. Uh, early marketing. <laughs> early marketing, you know, looking forward to the end of the war. Yeah. And he got away with subtle markings on the majority of the parts mm-hmm. um, till the department uh, the war department kind of caught wind of it yeah, <laughs> and got a little upset Yeah, and sent him a cease and desist and said, if you want to make any more of them, you will remove your little marks. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are those little marks, Scott? Yeah, the little F scribe, as you call them. If you guys remember in earlier Fords, if you go look up your history, the Ford was not a block letter logo. In right. fact, the round oval still has the script Ford Mm -hmm. with a very fancy capital F. Mm -hmm. It's a curly Q thing that almost looks more like it belongs on a sheet of music (laughs) than on the front of a vehicle. That's a bass clef, dog. Okay. And um, he had little stamps, I guess, made that are, what's that, about three sixteenths of an inch high? Even smaller ones because I actually bought F stamped bolts for the bumper. So, and... There are, as you go through this little Ford yeah. <laughs> GPW, um, that's got little F stamps. And they're cunningly worked into sheet metal, into tubes, into these things. And it's really fun to go on a hunt for them. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one thing about it that was kind of discouraging to you, and that was the fact that the passenger seat didn't seem to have any, right? Yeah, the, the driver's seat has an F stamp, the two fenders have an F stamp, and the left reflector at the back have F stamp. And now the four bumper bolts. Yeah, but if you take a look historically, not at Jeep, but at how Army's uh, quartermaster corps functioned, Mm-hmm. It does, and plus spending 32 years as an Army employee, civilian, mind you, but still, you know, into the business of the Army, you learn some things. And number one, in the Quartermaster Corps, it's all about moving cargo. Yeah. Okay? You got requests for materials, bullets, bandages, you name it, you know, Snickers bars, get them out there. Mm-hmm. And the Jeep's primary focus in the beginning was to not to be in combat, although it made itself famous getting into combat, mm-hmm. it was to move material. It was to be the light quarter ton uh, delivery vehicle. Yeah. And, you know, if you had a driver and you were moving material and you had a, an urgent situation, you know, a.k.a., I don't know, Battle of the Bulge, something like that, yeah. what did you do? You wanted to pile more in there. Well, it was very common that the seats unbolt very quickly. Uh, so they would take the passenger seat out and throw it in a pile with all the other Jeep passenger seats because then they could stack another simple crates in where a second person would be sitting. Yeah. And even though they were Ford stamped, you know, when you got back, we're talking the Army here, folks. They're in a pile. Yep. Oh, go grab one. I have to go over there and pick up somebody at the you know, flight line and bring them back from the Army Air Corps, bringing yeah. in Colonel <laughs> Heischmuck. You know, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get... We'll, get. <laughs> well, Heischmuck's now a four-star general, so well, this is true. with that. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, they go over, and because parts exchangeability between all mm-hmm. the deeps, they, they just grab the seat that was on top. So it would not be uncommon to see those kinds of parts swapping Mm -hmm. from a motor pool. You know, they're going to, they weren't worried about logos. They weren't worried. No. This was something that, this was no different than a weapon than a shovel, you know. Yeah. Keep moving. Um, They didn't want to be late picking up a high schmuck, and that way they're on (laughs) KP duty for the rest of the day. Correct. Paying Uh, taters. Yeah, or whatever, you know. So, you know, it's not unusual that you're, GPW has an MB passenger seat in it. <laughs> Ew, kitties. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of a nice lead in to what we were just playing with last weekend. I do have to make a quick okay. byline though. Nothing makes your butt pucker <laughs> as when you've been standing out there in the heat going, you know, man, it's been a minute an hour and I just, well, I just want to get the title and you walk in there. Uh, yeah. What's the, oh. oh, we're on the phone with the DOD right now. What? Yes. You know, my eyes just went wide and I'm like, I, I, I guess we never really shared the full story I, that I, I guess that, I should have scrubbed my browser history. <laughs> You know, after the archives came back, remember the lady at the uh, 
title center was like, yeah. well, Mr. Watson, we're sorry, but um, you don't get the blue antique tag. Yeah. By the way, for those of you in Florida, that's a... Uh, many states have blue for the antique tie. Mm -hmm. And I remember he, he's telling me this and his face was like melting. And he says, yeah, she says, however, you're going to get a tan tag. Yeah. And he, go ahead. What, yeah, did, you, what did you what, go to her? What's a tan tag? Yeah, what's a tan tag? And she hands me this tag and it's basically. It says historically significant mm -hmm. military vehicle. It says historical antique, as they call it. Yeah, historical antique. And it's only the 277th historical Plate. military antique in Florida. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. Um, so uh, it means that the vehicle, and the reason it's historically significant was they said because this was an in-theater vehicle. So mm -hmm. it actually saw, it may not have seen combat directly, although we did find witness marks that look suspiciously like bullet, bullet holes, holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that may or may not be uncovered from the bad yeah. repair job. Um, and it's in, I would probably call it C plus to B minus condition. Yeah. There's been some prior work that's a little iffy on the restoration side, but a little bodgy. not bad on the functional side. Yeah. Um, so, and it's been in his garage and we got it and we've mentioned in previous shows that we got it back to life mm -hmm. to actually operational, but it was probably a C minus to D yeah. operational status. Yeah. It might start, it might not, it, um... Yeah. 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 Well, basically, you know, Autumn wants to get it running re religiously for her Reliably, dad. yeah. Reliably, yes. Thank you. Because her dad, is, it's the same year as her dad's. Yeah. And, you know, her dad, six foot four, thinks he's going to jump in this thing like when he was 20 years old and go do donuts. And yes. And, and none of the three of us get in it very gracefully <laughs> yeah. nor easily. Yeah. So, and she's like, I just want to see my dad jump in this thing. So the old carburetor looks like it was bleeding out. <laughs> it, it was. I'm sorry. This might be, it looks like the carburetor had Ebola. It was just blood from every orifice. <laughs> It was bleeding, <laughs> so and it didn't look healthy. No, it didn't. So that was the first spot that we decided this weekend to address is when your carburetor is leaking so bad that overnight all the gas in the bowl is somewhere missing. Yeah, it's either in the engine, you know, or washing oil floor. off, or on the floor. <laughs> so digging through the box of parts that Scott was picked up with this particular vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a carburetor mm -hmm. and we went over last weekend. I went over to his side of the state mm -hmm. and we sat down and everybody's like, okay, are we going to bolt it on? No. Yeah. Not yet. I said, fortunately it looks like it's in better shape. Oh, I forgot to la mention the last part of the carburetor and we have talked about it before. So mm -hmm. those of you that are keen will go, I already heard that. Yes, you did. But that the last time we drove it, there's a little, stop assembly that sits on the <laughs> throttle shaft. It's a little V-shaped piece that bolts on the throttle shaft and moves with it that has set screws in it. And then there's a casting at the bottom under that throttle plate. And the screws are your idle stop on one side and your full throttle stop on the other. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing is, is when the one on the full throttle side breaks off and jams in the linkage, the mm -hmm. engine sits there with all its... 36 horsepower or whatever, whatever it is. It, is. it screams its heart out, and Autumn looks over at me with a panic look on her face going, my ah, foot's not on the gas. <laughs> yeah. Now, the nice thing I will tell you, having had a stuck throttle on a vehicle that had over 300 horsepower, uh, having 36 or nominally whatever's left in it, it gives you a little time to go, well, you know, <laughs> we can turn it off. We can do other things, you know. So I had her turn the key off as we were rolling it. Oh, oh my gosh, 26 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to get back to that in a second. Yeah. And um, then we did it again, and it was fine, and then finally figured out that we had a busted part. So yeah. what does that mean is that we knew we had to replace, rebuild, repair one of the R's yeah. um, to reuse <laughs> a factory-specific carburetor. Uh, I just had to buy a line yeah. here. So while Autumn is learning all about the carburetors and Kevin did his all little testings, we'll just, and he'll explain more into that. But see, my biggest fear on working on anything, okay, it doesn't matter if I'm changing a tire, okay, or the, I'm changing a radio, is that little part that just goes fling off into the universe well, we will never get to, to that, be won't seen we? again. <laughs> So I'm just setting the picture here, folks. Like, that is my biggest fear. So as Kevin will explain as we were working on the Jeep. So we start off, of course, this is a 
trying to teach as well, Autumn, mm-hmm. as well as Scott, to pick up a few extra tricks. Um, I admit to being old enough to have worked on more than a few of these older Carters and Rochesters and, and even, uh, you know, Hollies and stuff, early Hollies that yeah. were 100% manual. Mm-hmm. You know, no chokes, no 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 electric chokes, no sensors, no monitors, no pewters, yeah. um, just petrol, uh, petrol and air. So we did a little bit of whiteboarding and explained how they work and, you know, that I'm not going to go into that. Folks, that you want to learn changer. how it goes, go Google, how does a carburetor work? <laughs> and there's better graphics than me scribbling on yeah. a whiteboard. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do where we're getting at is before I just slap a carburetor that I have no idea, we're going to open it up and we're going to check it out and make sure stuck's not float. They both looked at me when I picked the thing up and maybe some of you know what I'm talking about and some don't. It appears I was giving mouth to mouth to the gas feed of the carburetor. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Clear. Yeah, well, admit it. You, both of you raised your eyebrows. Yeah, I did. And Autumn finally said, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. And, uh, Hopefully, those of you that have worked on one is going, oh, I know what he was doing. I was checking to make sure that the fuel float was working, okay, yeah. and wasn't stuck. If you hold a carburetor in its normal position that's empty, the float bowl check valve needle seat should be open, and you should be able to blow air in. But if you turn it over, the float should close, and it should seal and not take in air. And hopefully, that's how it works in the vehicle is against the fuel pump. So I checked that, and then we, t- we took it apart. We made sure that the... Uh, throttle stop little V piece was not broken on that one uh, and found that, okay, <clears throat> yeah, the throttle accelerator pump in that carburetor was really, really hard, <laughs> just yeah. as it was in the one that was in the Jeep leaking all over the place. So we start going through, this is how this works, this is how that works, this is how the check valve, and this is where Scott's little reference talks about, is the <laughs> accelerator pump on this particular model carburetor, this Carter, comes to one of two ways. And I find it interesting that Willys, most of the Willys, which is the volume, had a plunger-style accelerator pump. And if you really want to try and picture in your mind what that is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Get your toilet plunger, mm-hmm. stick it in a pipe, and push down. It's going to pump yeah. something out, uh, except it's in miniature and some of the carburetor. Yeah. And it sits on the side of the carb and gasoline comes in from the float bowl and when you hit the gas pedal it plunges the tank yeah um on the other hand ford i guess decided to be different it's still a carter carburetor the Mm -hmm. same freaking model number just a different suffix on the end and it has the later model Mm -hmm. which is more common to newer carburetors uh diaphragm type accelerator pump that uses a linkage bar and it little pry bar level is the only way I can say it that pushes on a diaphragm that again pulls in fuel from the carburetor and then when you push it down a check valve keeps the fuel from going back in the tank and it squirts it down the uh, the throat of the carburetor to give you that little oomph to keep going so the engine doesn't stutter and stall which right. is what it was doing mm-hmm. um, but that little check valve is a little tiny three piece assembly that goes through this really delicate aluminum casting And it has a small hairspring coil spring, (laughs) which, as Scott alluded to in the intro, (laughs) took off in a bid for freedom. And I actually saw it hit the toe of my sneaker (laughs) and then make a break for the middle of the garage. The three of us hunted for 45 minutes Uh on hands and knees with flashlights. Magnets. It has yet to reappear. Um, yeah. Fortunately, we have a dying carburetor over on the Jeep, which <laughs> kindly had signed a donor card in its early days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, long story short on that is we didn't have a gasket set. And Scott, I think you have an update on the gasket set? Yeah, still on national back order. Go parts guy. <laughs> so anyway, we uh, we did a, a barnyard rebuild and i wouldn't even call it a barnyard rebuild we did a battlefield rebuild we did a battlefield take two and make one yeah and those of you that have played in that arena know what i'm talking about Mm -hmm. it was like basically take two carburetors completely apart and go yeah nope 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 yep yep nope yep 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 yep, nope 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 and i'm sitting here pantomiming you can't see me slide stuff to the right nope 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 yep 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 
well, I got to pick one of those because I can't have two no's. I got to have at least one yes. Yeah. <laughs> and what so, is the least worst of the no? Correct. And we reassembled it with, and you can send me the hate mail, but we reused all the old gaskets. Mm-hmm. Yes, I had gasket paper, but they didn't seem to be that bad. And uh, we put it all back together. And then using this tried and true, let's go about a turn and a half out on the idle seat n- needle. Um, I'm going to leave the uh, idle stop where it was because somebody would used this car before. So I don't know what it was, but we'll see what it's like. Yeah. Um, and put it all together and put it on the Jeep. <clears throat> and it was kind of a, a little bit of a drama. I, I don't have a drum roll, Scott. <laughs> but you can hear... Uh, we, we let Autumn jump in. Okay, crank it. And she puts her foot on the little pedal and it goes, rump, 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 rump. Six-volt system, folks. It does not go, yeah. rump, 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 rump. And you could watch the the uh, accelerator problem. She'd stop. She'd, it's not. Keep doing it. We got to pump gas up a teaspoon at a time, maybe a tablespoon out of that pump. You yeah. could actually see the little blurt, blurt, blurt. And we now know that we're also fighting the gunk in the tank and the filter. Yeah, that's what it was this morning. And, twitch, uh, twitch, 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 twitch. <laughs> He's going to start buying fuel filters by the gross if he doesn't buy a no, new I'm fuel tank. No, I'm buying one more fuel pump for a filter, and then I'm buying a fuel tank. <laughs> okay. Uh, Second paycheck. <laughs> but about the third time, uh, it was, it just went, rump, rump, boom, blah, 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 and it idled. Now, it idled a little rough and quickly because the carburetor sits right on top of the exhaust manifold, and if you're trying to adjust it after the engine is run more than 45 seconds, you will burn your hand. I grabbed in there and... Played with the idle screw, rolled the idle screw out, what, maybe another quarter turn. Mm-hmm. She smoothed out, and it actually ran really well. Uh-huh. Um, it just had no real accelerator pump. You could pump the accelerator all you wanted, and you'd be lucky if you could see, you know, a snot bubble of fuel coming out the accelerator pump jet. Yeah. However, if you kind of dance the throttle to bring up the airflow, you know, and you guys that have worked again with old cars with dead accelerator pumps, you know what I'm talking about, that and slowly build the revs up. You could see the carburetor flow and fuel beautifully. Levels were fine. A few couple of small tweaks with the needle seats. And now instead of the usual startup that it took, which was a PETA, mm-hmm. um, you could get in it, even stone cold, pull the choke, step your foot on the, uh, uh, starter button, and it would light off without even dancing the gas. Go ahead. Should we, yes, say, should we be pushing the gas? No, you really shouldn't. You shouldn't okay. have to. Because Autumn was trying to push the gas this morning, too, yeah. while the... She's driven older cars that evaporated out the bowl. The idea is the accelerator pump puts raw gas down there. Okay. But we proved already that you don't have to do that in this one. The choke is a tight enough choke, folks, uh, that it will pull fuel in and fire up. It's just right now it stopped starting because the and not double stopped starting <laughs> uh, because the old fuel tank is a mungy mess with fiberglass patches and tar and that kind of stuff. And a lot of that is breaking free now with the newer gasoline and it's heading down the line. Now, the good news is, is it has a fuel filter. The bad news is it's not the big cleanable one. It's still on the firewall, but it's been bypassed with a lawnmower filter in yeah. there. And um as Scott said, when it wouldn't start again, he noticed that the the gas pump, mm-hmm. the you know the fuel pump on the engine. This is one of the original glass bowl types, so you can actually see every time there's a stroke, the the blurp of fuel coming up in the glass bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, it um, wasn't blurping up very well. Yeah, was it? When, when when you showed me when she was starting last time, I saw the blurp 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 blurp, you know, coming yep. up. This time it's more of a. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. So it really like wasn't. Like a kid trying to use broccoli, you know? <laughs> but I do have to say. I do... Was it sliding pieces off the side yeah, of it and giving yeah. it to the dog? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. The dog's like, what the heck? No, 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 pal, cookies. No, no, no. no what's funny is like when you when we backed out for the test drive, because I want to jump ahead because this was the funny part, mm-hmm. is, you know, Autumn, of course, you know, she drives off with Kevin, you know, and she's still scared to drive it. She's she still is. getting used to it. Again, as we mentioned before, we're talking about an engine that has maybe a whopping 35 horsepower at best. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure the, the historians will correct me on it, but it felt like about 35 was left yeah. and a three speed crash box, no synchros. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because you know, we watched her go and then she came back, you know, 15 minutes later. I was like, <laughs> you know, do I have to go look for them? I hope, hope they give me, she has Kevin. He's fine. But uh, then Kevin's like, let me drive. Like, okay. I'm getting in for this. I said, I, well, what I want to do is, her problem is, is she's used to driving her little Honda. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And she has an automatic transmission. And even though she's driven a manual or two, she's used to having this funny little thing called torque. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you have four really old squirrels from 1942, you know, and haven't been fed well for a long time, they don't make a lot of torque. You know, they're, they're kind of lackadaisical on that treadmill. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're running on it's pretty impressive. But yeah. um, I said, you've got to give it some revs. I said, have you ever watched MASH? And she's like, well, yeah, but I said, it's got to, you want to rev the engine. If you remember MASH, when they're going up the hill to pick up the hel- patients from the helicopters and you see the Jeep and you hear the, oh, oh. she goes, well, it's not a hot rod. I said, I know, but it needs every horsepower you can get out of it. You've got to yeah. let it wind up a little bit, you know, not over rev. I'm not, folks, I'm not talking about going to 6,000 RPM. I'm talking about, let's make it to 3,000 and call it good. Yeah. And so I pull out, like he says, and I go ahead and, oh. Oh, we're forgetting the most important thing. Yes. The brakes. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll get to that. That's that's a rewind on time, and we'll yeah. get to the brake issue. Uh, we'll start off just just let you know that when we initially got the engine running and decided to take it out for a test drive, it wouldn't move out of the garage. Yeah. Enough said. <laughs> yeah. So I took her for a ride, but I decided this time, I looked over, Scott, you want to ride? And he's like, oh, yeah. To give you an idea how small an MB or GPW <laughs> is, a Scott took the back seat. Supposed to be two, but he pretty much took the whole back seat. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm not saying it's because he's big. It's the Jeep's that small. Yeah. Because I took up the front seat, hung a little bit out of the other side. The steering wheel was in my gut. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the seat is all the way back for whatever adjustment it doesn't have. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but we had great fun, and we revved it up. But the look on her face when I looked over to see if she was getting this, I said, you know, this is how you drive it. It's actually... <clears throat> surprisingly spirited for, you know, a 1942 vehicle. It got up and it it boogied along just fine. Mm-hmm. And I think what got her question is she kept slowing down well before stops. And I was like, no, 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 use the engine. And I downshifted a couple of times doing RPM matching and, you know, and then pulled off. And lo and behold, you know, it ran beautifully and it pulled strong. And, you know, we never got up much above 40 miles an hour, 45. With, and, of course, she insisted on putting the windshield down for these runs. So, you know, yeah. 40 miles an hour, something built in 42, <laughs> you know, um, missing. <laughs> no seat belt. And I was going to say missing a few safety items <laughs> that were not part of 1942 equipment. And, yes, they have some aftermarket ones. Um, there's enough drama at 40 miles an hour to <laughs> to not, yeah. you know, you, you'd have felt like she, you, you, she had the look of somebody in a convertible sports car doing 85, you know, on, <laughs> on a back road. Right. And we were doing less than half of that. But it was still a lot of fun. Now, let's rewind the clock as Scott's yeah. sitting over here just absolutely butt dancing, wanting to talk about the other side. Well, no, it, it wasn't really much, you know, because, again, the big question was what kind of condition were the brakes in? You know, lo and behold, pff, new brake shoes. But <laughs> yeah, this is another one for you folks that who understand the older vehicles. These are the era of brakes where you didn't just buy new shoes and they fit. You actually took the irons off is what they call the backing plates, Uh, not the backing plate at the back of the axle, but behind the pad material. And they relined them. They rebonded pads, sometimes riveted, sometimes glued. Right. And then you had, they were just out of a common stock. And then you had to size the shoe to the drum or the drum to the shoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took both for us. Yeah. The pad was really, really thick. thick. Yeah. Um, and Scott did sand them down, but we didn't have any power sanding. All we had was a little sanding pad. <laughs> <laughs> and he did take off all of the scorch and the yeah. stuck mark because we knew I knew something was up when we adjusted the slack. These have cam adjusts on each shoe separately. Mm-hmm. And they actually tell you in the the manual that you back them off to zero, and then you bring them up till the shoe touches, and then you adjust them till you have eight thousandths clearance. Yet you look at it and you go, how am I supposed to get a feeler gauge in there when I have a backing plate and a drum on it? Yeah. Okay. The answer is like every mechanic did in every motor pool, you kind of learn to feel it. You kind of back, you back it off, you bring it forward till it drags as you're turning the drum, and then you go till it just barely is going shink, shink, shink. But in our case, we couldn't even get there from here. Yeah. We backed them all the way off and sanded them, and it would go turn a little bit, and it would stop. And it was pretty clear that the drums were not round. 
Yeah. When we pulled them off, I don't know if they're repros or if they're new old stock or whatever, but that drum had never seen a lathe. Yeah. And it was not round. And then we go down to our local parts store, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it's it's that otter parts st- store, you know, where you buy parts for your otter. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, all the otter parts here. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, and, I forgot how to the button now. <laughs> oh, wait. Damn it. Whatever. One of the buttons. Um, they, uh, they initially were like, well, we, we have to have the specs on that. We don't know what to turn. And we're like, does your specs book go back to 40 well no but they had to get the day manager to come out and approve i said look all i want you to do is a quick skim pass just skim it we'll take responsibility and he's looking at me there looks like there's another yeah this is not in the day of disposable drums these yeah (laughs) there was there are some heavy drums for small diameter long story short they cut it down we got it back everything went on and lo and behold the driver's front wheel actually rotated. And the best part about the driver wheel is Scott had a very important lesson where he learned about left-handed lug nuts. Yeah, that was <laughs> that's how it all started. He's going, they're not coming loose. I don't want to break them. And I'm like, try turning it the other way. And he looked at me with the same eyes. He's looking yeah, at me now going, yeah. what? That that goes against everything. Like when you're, tight, when you're tightening them and you're Righty going loose. Left. Oh, my. That, <laughs> everything in your head screams, what are you doing? <laughs> Needless to say, he goes, it doesn't feel... Boom. Did it break? No, it just came loose. What? <laughs> Everything in your head screams. And then no, even no, when no. you spin the nuts off, I'm looking, Scott, you're putting them back on. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> Excuse much. Excuse me. Beep that. <laughs> if necessary. Uh, um, uh, let me get a picture. I so, shouldn't have to. It, it, yeah. It's that's, kind of, boop, okay. Yeah. So uh, that was one of those fun things. I said, yeah, I wonder if you'd had a flat on an event where you had to this thing and how long you'd been sitting there scratching your head. The truth well, is most of us break one lug nut or one stud before we realize, oh, they're left hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the funny thing, the, the fun thing was after you left, Yep. Um, Autumn's like, you know, he, he really needs a bath, you know, because she named the Jeep Butch after her dad. And I said, okay, so I got the soap can and I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and wash the Jeep. So I went ahead and I washed the Jeep with the You're soap so can. Nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> time to dry it. <laughs> I have never driven it. I put the key in, boom, fired right up, and I took Butch for a spin around the block. And let me tell you something, that can sound frightening sometimes. <laughs> the, the worst part for me was, and now I can understand, like, because you drove it before. Yeah. I think and I, when I told Autumn, because she, she walked outside because she heard me start it. Yeah. And I come pulling back. She goes, what did you think? And I said, it's it, it's it's definitely a whole nother beast. Uh-huh. What gets her and me, I'm able to vocalize this for her. Yeah. Is the shifting the gears because we're we're used to those modern transmissions where you standard just, pattern you just you you just pull it out of gear and it almost glides right in the next gear. Called a synchro, yes. Yeah, this is like where is it over? Is it over here? Is it over here <laughs> in the back seat? Where, where's the sec, where's second gear? You know, first off, it's an H pattern, folks. With first being down, to the left and down. Second is right and up. Yeah, by and three feet. Three, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's what we used to call the school bus pattern. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're punching the other, you're punching the uh, the passenger in the knee. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so we was, might have to look at some worn linkage. Yeah. I can't understand why it would be worn. So, so, so first is where second is for you. Second is where sixth is. <laughs> True. <laughs> and third is where reverse is on a typical, like, you know, six B transmission. Right. And, and reverse is where first is in yeah. your old. Um, and it's funny, too, because I told Autumn, she's like, you know, we, maybe we should take it to the grocery store. And I'm like, I don't know. By getting stolen, she goes, if anybody steals this thing, first thing they're going to do is run into the car behind them because they're going to think that's first gear if they can even get started. <laughs> and by that time, if they drive off with it, they deserve it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no. <laughs> Well, it does have a key. Yes, that's it does. the one non-stock item we'll probably leave. Yes, um, although we probably should put the toggle in and put the key in some other unseen location. <laughs> but uh, no, it was kind of fun when I drove it. I again, I'd never driven it before, and I, and I kind of drove it like you did. Yeah, you know, I drove it like I stole it, and it's well, uh, you have to. That particular engine, you know, doesn't develop enough power for modern traffic. Yeah. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, you got to put yourself in the mind. Just drive it like a uh, um, a quartermaster core driver with a, a, a an enemy bicycle uh, motorcycle coming up behind you with a gunner <laughs> or a T Rex. <laughs> yeah, you'd still be munchy meat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was kind of a fun weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, when you you have one problem, you know. Yeah. And you get through that, and you go to move it, and you go, oh, there's another problem. And then, of course, that leads you to 
where do I get the parts? How do I get it fixed? What can I do to make it work? Yeah. And uh, then ultimately be successful. However, there's still a wanted poster on the wall of that garage for that stupid little uh, hairspring. <laughs> Well, I, to be honest with you, it's probably really gone now because I, I get all the leaves out of the oh, garage. You blow it out? I lose the leaves. Oh, heaven, it's down the street and down the back. Oh, no, no, no. It's probably hanging off for dear life somewhere. It's still in there. <laughs> it, it, just to spiteful. The day I move out is a day I'm going to find it. Oh, that's fine. But uh, the next morning, it's, it fired right up. And again, I guess it just set too long because it's right now. And Butcher's like, nope, I ain't doing it. It's Sunday. No way. Well, no. it could also be, like you said, you looked yeah. at the fuel filter and it was full of schmutz and it had taken time because we drove it now. So we've shaken up the gas tank. We. We put a whole bunch of uh, debris, shall we call it, in yeah. suspension, and it's now down and stuck in the filter. So yeah. it's better that it's stuck in the filter than stuck in clogging up the carburetor. Mm-hmm. Which so, is fine. The filter did its job. And so. I will just tell you, for those of you out there who are you know, diehard uh, Jeep and aficionados who like to work on things, who are really those uh, gearheads, mm-hmm. go out and get yourself one of these. They will really just twist your mind up they will test your skills they will and your patience and the thing is is you can't run down to the local parts store whatever brand it is Mm -hmm. and uh and pick up parts for a 42 mb or gpw either one and you will have to work at your education skills to teach the parts counter people what you're looking for Mm -hmm. Uh, because they look at you with kind of wide eyes that are used to staring at cell phone screens and go you want what <laughs> well the, the last thing is, is that we really night. need to take it and by the way oh. all, all all fairness aside a shout out to the crew at the o'reilly's auto parts yes. store not a sponsor but yes. you know for putting up with us as we're there you know and that deltona mm-hmm. florida yeah. uh they were a great bunch of guys who obviously we were pushing their limits mm-hmm. uh, but they came through for us so yeah. thanks guys yeah we appreciate it and the other thing too a quick little byline is I learned something new because we didn't have a stoplight. And now I know why we don't have a stoplight. Mm-hmm. It's not meant to have a stoplight. Correct. What it is is you pull the switch out one click. Yeah. And that's your blackout lights. Yep. Then you pull the one for the front blackout light. Yeah. Put that back in. You pull it out a second time because that, that knob, knob clicks again. Yep. That's your headlamps. Yep. But you still don't have a brake light. It's not until you pull the switch out for the third time that activates the brake light switch. Oh, so they actually do work? No. <laughs> But so we I, still have I'm to trace gonna, them. I'm going to try getting a bulb first. That would be good, you know, because that's that's the that's the e- easiest thing to do after and I order the master volt, cylinder. You have to get six volt bulbs. Yes. Um, but yeah, okay, that's cool. So much. Uh, that's one thing I meant to tell you is that you know. So, but here's the interesting thing. So yeah. that means it only works in the third position. So when if you're driving during the day, you have to pull that out, and you have no headlamps, and at night. You don't have a brake light because it has to be in the second position to have the headlamps on, but you will not have a tail lamp. And the guy told you specifically in the video, yeah, that's why I didn't read the instructions. Uh, um, he goes, you know, just so you know, just because you have headlamps and a tail, the tail lamps do light up, they you, you will not have a brake light unless you do some some bypass wiring, yep. which we could do hidden. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a trick we can do with a diode mm-hmm. that would prevent that would let it power up the brake lights on that other position but would not have them come on when you're just doing the headlights exactly uh we, we can come up with something on that we can take it with it and uh yeah that's but it's a neat neat situation folks this uh first thing you do is when you're working on these old vehicles is have a manual fortunately autumn was able to secure a reprint of the factory service manual and associated bulletins mm-hmm. um it's about <clears throat> it's it's a small size it's not a big book uh and so it takes a while to follow through it because it's got all kinds of different page numberings because it's made of a compilation of a lot of different, you know, yeah. books. Um, it also assumes you have all Army special tools, <laughs> um, <laughs> which we don't. <laughs> no, we do. We um, imp- improvise and adapt it. Yeah. And uh, it does send you back in technology, okay? There's no star adjuster wheels on those brakes. There's not even an adjuster wheel. Yeah. There is cams you know rotary cams and you have to have a certain piece to go in there and if you're on the front side of the cam by the front wheels you're by the steering arms which blocks your access now if you had the factory slotted you know tool you could reach through but so scott and i have a plan we're going to make one army catalog 2x4345 whatever some paragraph 2 tool we will make that as well as a few others because there are no auto adjusters on those it is a regular 
maintenance item to adjust the brakes. You judge it by your pedal. Um, same sort of thing. We're going to have to clean up and rebuild the clutch because right now the clutch free play is way too much. That You have to lift your leg out all the way up to get it to engage. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't know what condition the, the actual clutch disc is in. Yep. Uh, that will require further disassembly to get to. But for the moment, it works. It does not seem to slip. It does engage fine as long as your foot's way the heck out, you know. And yeah. there is a thrust rod with a thread, and we will see if there is sufficient room on that for us to adjust that uh, to get it back into a more normal level. If not, oh well. Yeah. When the when the transmission is mm, 10 inches by 10 inches by three four or five no no probably 12 inches long a um, lot more engines bigger than the transmission yeah it probably a true statement in many cases mm-hmm. and then transfer case is actually bigger than the transmission yeah and here's one for you guys that have all been under old jeeps and think you know it all is the drive shaft on these is not in line with the engine a crankshaft yeah it comes out of the box um so the chain drive drives both the rear and the front. You have to select which one you're into. It. <clears throat> and they're all, <clears throat> excuse me, those are all twin stick trans, uh, transfer cases. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an interesting, a very interesting critter. Yeah. Um, you can actually flat toe these, and it was by design, if you go to the back of that transfer case and pull a cover plate off. Yep. In the middle, and that is in line with the engine. And there's a drive gear that drives the whole assembly, and you, it's just splined on the shaft. And you take the cover plate off and slide the gear out, put the cover plate back on, and you got no drive, which means you can tow it. Yep. Uh, it's just kind of a neat little critter. Uh, other things worth pointing out to Scott is that the front hubs and the rear hubs and the drums and the front and the rear and the right and the left are all the same. Yep. So any one of them goes anywhere. Um, so kind of a neat little beastie. So it that is. was a fun thing to play with a Ford gpw mm-hmm. and find out some of the differences to find a few more of the ford stamps um it's kind of interesting because they're subtle i've got a picture of the one on the fender right below the the military marker lights that are up on the on the fender mm-hmm. uh, blackout lights and uh, you don't see it in the picture fortunately yeah. there's a high res p- picture so you just start zooming in and if you know where to look all of a sudden there comes a i wouldn't even call it ghostly a pretty clearly stamped ford script f mm-hmm. So cool, 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 cool. Absolutely. So one of the things we want to do eventually is is take the little Jeep wheeling. Yeah. You know, it's a little events slash or other ideas. And you and I got talking about that a little bit where uh, there's a just as we're recording the show is there a big weekly or where a weekend event coming up that going on right now. Right now. Yeah. And, and uh, that's uh, in over in Polk County. Uh, mm-hmm. Sheriff Grady Judd hosts Jeeping with Judd. Yep. <clears throat> and uh it should be wrapping up as we're finishing this show. Neither Scott nor I um, got our tickets in time, and, and that's okay. We both have many other things going on in life, mm-hmm. uh, so we did not make it to that event, although I've already got my tickets for Sheriff's Jeep Fest up in Georgia. I didn't let that one fall apart, um, and uh, that's going to be later uh, later this year. Usually uh, more, uh, Labor Day weekend, I think. Yeah. Oh, the other one I'll, 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 I'll put a teaser is if any of you are up in the Northeast or going to the – Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival. Uh, it's actually in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, but next to... Uh, um, I just had an... Uh, uh, you know where the Jeep was born. Um, Starts with a B. Uh, Bantam? Well, Bantam Jeeps, uh, but it was uh, Butler, Butler. Butler, PA. Um, we, I will be there. My wife and I will be there with mm-hmm. Slightly Altered. We're taken all the way up to Pennsylvania because actually be honest with you folks uh that side of pennsylvania i'm a penn state grad don't hate me for it uh it's a good engineering school and uh then over washington county pennsylvania which is to the west side of pittsburgh is where my father's farm was that uh, i grew up and actually started you know having those temper tantrums when bolts (laughs) on jeeps broke Uh, (laughs) didn't have those fancy induction heaters in uh no (laughs) It was definitely working in an old slat wood barn mm. with my back on the concrete and listening to the cow outside behind the barn going, <laughs> okay, when I get this fixed, I'll move it. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, ah, you're, you're being utterly bullied. Oh. 
And on that note. Well, at least you didn't have to run high. So uh, anyhow, for those of you that are going to the uh, the Bantam Heritage, Jeep Heritage Festival, uh, keep an eye out for a little black Jeep with a red uh, and white flag on the tail. Uh, it's a castle. Uh, it's the Corps of Engineer castle. My Army Heritage, mm-hmm. along with the Jeeps. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Feel free to stop and say hi. Sorry. Um, we're not doing a show event there. It's just <clears throat> I wanted to go up. Sorry. Hey, we're, we're, we just Welcome got to done. pollen season. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're good, pollen season and next is hurricane season. Yeah, so so uh, say hi. Uh, feel free. And we'll, we're, we're just going to go up, my wife and I, and we got a couple of the the events signed up for them. We're going to go wander around and spend some time in Butler, Pennsylvania. Woohoo! Woohoo! hoo So... Uh, is there anything else you want to cover before we uh, go on to our last subject? No, no. I, I think okay. it's a good segue into the okay. subject because, like, again, it's it's one of those things like in Florida, we don't have so much uh, private or, or uh, public, public lands. lands and stuff like that. So we a lot of the wheeling in Florida is by these events. Right. And we use the wheel, word wheeling loosely. Yeah. Everybody has a different thing. Uh, everybody likes their Jeep to do different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I shouldn't say that. There are groups. And one thing Scott and I got in a discussion on, I thought we'd carry it on on the show for the rest of you to stick some thoughts in your heads and maybe seek some of your opinions. And that is that, you know, you're not an elitist if you don't like to necessarily do everything a Jeep can do. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there, I'm sad to say, who think if you don't go out and rock bounce, you're not a real Jeeper. Or if you don't go out and do the mud pits, you're not a real Jeeper. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you don't uh, overland, you know, for I'm going out for three weeks, (laughs) you know, um, and what we want to talk about was I throw an idea out, one of these little epiphanies that occurred to me that, you know, there are really only several kinds, if you want to call it, of wheeling. Uh, but within each kind, <clears throat> there's mild to extreme. Does that make sense? Yeah. And one of them I'll throw out there is typical to Florida. And it's one of the reasons, you know, some of you may who know me know that eh, I enjoy events in Florida, don't get me wrong. Uh, but after a while, they get kind of, I get kind of used to After tired. year five. After year five, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. Uh, and that is because, and I'll state it my way, and understand this is my opinion, is that we don't really have trails in Florida. And what do I mean by trails? And that's kind of the thing. Is in Florida, as Scott said, we do have some fire roads, okay, but they're a maintained service road into our uh, county parks and hunting road access and stuff like that. And to me, and this is my opinion, you have obviously obstacle courses, which are built to go out and either train yourself or try and break your Jeep, you know. But yeah. generally speaking, obstacle courses, I'll treat them in the realm of they're experience builders. They're a great thing to go do, and you kind of learn. Um, but they're set up by humans. And even the trails that we have at our events, okay, uh, and again, not trying to pick on any of them, they're man-made. The landscape, we don't have the landscape in Florida that <laughs> creates yeah. anything other than sand pits, okay? And if you're into sandbogging, yeah, you can go out and do all you want. But otherwise, you kind of have to uh, have the help <clears throat> of a man and a backhoe or a bulldozer mm-hmm. to create um something to make the jeep work otherwise you're just driving on sand you can do that at the beach you can do it in the center of the state it's still driving on sand Mm -hmm. yes we have rock outcrops but they're so rare that somebody usually owns it and tells you you can't go there um and even if it is um, remember the highest point in florida is only 380 feet above sea level yeah which ain't much (laughs) um so to me there's obstacle course and then there's long obstacle courses that are essentially something called a trail, but it starts, you usually do it in a group. You might have a head Jeep leading and a tail gunner type thing to pick up the broken pieces, but they're man-made. All right. Yeah. And I don't mind using them as a training aid, a Mm -hmm. teaching aid, you know, just going out and stretching my Jeep, but it's not really what I like to do. Yeah. Now there's the other side of that. And that is going to be, um, 
what do we want to call that, Scott? Since we use trails in our in our mix, let's mm-hmm. call it expeditionary. Yeah, okay. Um, and expeditionary can go from mild to extreme. You know, there is the expeditionary, like Paris to Dakar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, where you. <clears throat> go yeah. out and you live in a tent and you dig slit trenches for that unmentionable stuff that we can't say on air. <laughs> and yes, mom, you have to explain that to your kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, um, human exhaust. Yes. <laughs> what the bear does. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we still don't know if he does it in the woods or not. <laughs> yeah, you got to have woods. No. Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, uh, and what I'll use in terms of expeditionary is the fact that even if you're one of my favorite things about wheeling is not always the wheeling, but where you go. Hmm? There's usually a destination, and that's the difference to me between an obstacle course, whether it's a trail obstacle course or not, is the destination. And I've said before, I've enjoyed going places that had something either at the end or en route to the end, a historical site, an abandoned facility, farm, you know, uh, a vista, a river, you know, a lake, something that the average tourist can't get to. Right. Um, for me, wheeling is a means to the end, not the end itself. Right. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I, I love wheeling. I love challenging myself, but I like to be rewarded with something. I'm, I'm very envious of those people in the Midwest, you know, uh, all the way to the West Coast, okay, because... Yes, they have trails that unto themselves, the trail, you know, the the has usually great overlooks, really neat wildlife, um, and a sense of you can go somewhere that somebody else really can't. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be taken from the extreme of a day trip to go to, you know, an abandoned farm, a ghost town. That's yeah. a classic one. Uh, or I had one in Alaska that was fantastic. Uh, went with a group of Jeepers. And, yeah, we were in a group, but it was only about five Jeep long. And we were in the Tongass National Forest, <clears throat> which back way when Alaska was still, you know, young and pre-statehood was logged. Mm-hmm. And we went up the old logging sluices and roads. And when we get to the top, you're rewarded by one the base of the king tree, which is where the cables, when they were winching the logs down, was attached to, it's still there, and it's a 30-foot diameter stump. And you get up on top of the stump, and lo and behold, you can see all the way down into the intercoastal waterway. And you could see, you know, the the towns and the, the, the things way, way, way. It was like standing on top of a mountain. Um, and it's a space that, you know, a location to go and see and uh, enjoy. And it was kind of like the, the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae yeah. and that sweet bite at the, in that case, on Sunday, it's a bit first bite, but in this case <laughs> you get to the top and then you, you crawl back down and, and the challenge is, as you're coming back down, daylight's fading fast. And when you get in the mountain shadow, as you come down, you're wheeling in the dark. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it wasn't reproduced for everybody. It was a, a case of going somewhere, seeing something, doing something. Uh, and so so there's wheeling people who are like myself, that wheeling is a means to a destination, an end, mm-hmm. uh, something. But that doesn't make the people, it doesn't, we can't say that the people that go obstacle coursing are any less of a wheeler than those of us that use the Jeeps to go somewhere that others can't, right? short of hikers or, you know, horse people. It's all wheeling, folks, I guess is what the point is, mm-hmm. is that I understand that there are folks, we've got a good friend of ours who's building a beautiful buggy for the purpose of going out and climbing rocks, mm-hmm. okay? But that's the purpose of the buggy, and that's what he loves. Yeah. So... I'll watch. <laughs> I'll, yeah. To me, I think that's awesome because he's going for his passion. Yeah. Okay. And in a way, it's nice because he can go to an event or even if the event is someplace like um, the the place in Tennessee, Windrock. Windrock, yeah. Which has rocks, natural rocks, and he gets to go out and challenge those. But that's what he's doing. He's going out to challenge himself, challenge his vehicle to make it that hill climb. And that's great. I do not consider him any more or less of an off-road wheeler, a jeeper, than those of us who I'm quite happy 
you know, hey, if, if the whole trip is nothing but, you know, running off road and, and jumping fire ruts and, you know, crossing the creeks to end up somewhere that I've never been before, that's mm-hmm. got something neat to go look at. Like uh, I did go wheeling with some friends out in the uh, Nevada region. Was it Nevada? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Colorado region. And it was not a difficult trail. I'd probably put it out of a one to ten. I'd probably put it at a four, four and a half. Okay. And it went to an old mine. And then we got to go poke around the mine. Of course, they'd filled the mine entrance in so you couldn't go down in the mine, which is probably good since Colorado's notorious for mines going crunch, crump, squish, you're dead. Yeah. Uh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> but true. But true. Uh, but to me, I love going around all of these older engineering structures because that's what I am. I'm an engineer. Right. So I guess what I'm going to with this whole diatribe is – I don't like it, and this is just my preference, when I hear people, well, you're not a wheeler because you don't fill in the blank. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you ain't broke something, you ain't jeeping. Yeah, I've heard that too many. If you're not running 42s, you're not a real jeeper. If you're not running one tons, you're not a real jeeper. The truth is you are a jeeper. If you drive it, if it has the logo and it says Jeep on the key, and maybe it doesn't because it's an aftermarket key, but, you know, you get the point. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're still a cheaper. Even if you're running a stone stock Jeep, even if you're running a 42 Ford built GPW. <laughs> it's it's uh, Autumn loves this meme that was shared. Yeah. It has this picture of a, a fully built JK. Yeah. And says you need uh, to oh, yeah. modified in order to wheel. And, and the, uh, the, the next picture is the front of the GPW going in the air. Yeah. This is like laughs in GPW. Like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. You go there and you have fun with what you got. And that's it. Do what you like with your Jeep and build it your way to do what you like. Mm -hmm. And that's been the whole purpose of this show. I probably should have saved this topic till um, uh, the 200th show. But the whole point was, is of course, folks, with our local event, and it's a big one, Sheriff's Jeep, uh, I'm sorry, Jeeping with Judd is Mm -hmm. a big deal. They had to actually restrict registration for it because it's become so popular. 2,200 Jeeps. Uh, 2,200 Jeeps. And it got kind of expensive uh, as far as a Jeep event. But But it is charity. It is charity, and it goes to a very good purpose. Um, It doesn't mean that you're not a Jeeper if you don't go to that event. And what I heard is I've heard several things and I've seen several posts that were somewhat derogatory. That, And it was funny. You watch the post and it was both. If you go there, you're not a real Jeeper because that's just this, 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 this. And I also saw, hey, if you're not there, you're not a Jeeper. Yeah. I'm like, guys, take it easy. Yeah. No, they Get did. it easy. You know, it really doesn't matter. If your idea of a perfect Jeep does nothing more than hit, not even climb, just hit the parking stops in the parking lot and you have 22s with underglows and rubber band tires and your stereo system. And if that's what makes you happy, go for it, dude. Yeah. You know, I enjoy myself, not only what I do with my Jeep, but I like the fact that people go, dude, what are you going to do your Jeep? <laughs> when, when are you going to build it? Yeah, <laughs> that's when my are you going to build it? And my answer is, um, it's basically done. Um, there's not much that hasn't been touched. Yeah. You know, I kind of look at it as, eh, Jeep got it pretty dang close with the TJs. I am a, as many have said, I'm kind of the TJ guy. Yeah. But that's what I have. Okay. And that's what I fought, bought. Uh, I wanted the mid body. And you'll know why I call them mid body. You ever get a chance to go sit in a GPW or a MB, <laughs> you will know why that's called the small body Jeep. Yeah. Because uh, he's small. You could dang near put it in the back of my TJ. Yeah, that's probably an exaggeration, but not much. <laughs> well, it, it, I, I, we make the joke it's a glorified golf cart. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. you, it, it has the same footprint. Practically. I have seen side by sides that were larger than your GPW. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a really small vehicle. It's designed, the whole reason for off road was to get it to get through European forests, you know, yeah. and get materials to the combat soldier. And a no frills way, no frills way. Yeah. And it very much does that. But you're still a Jeeper. If you like your Jeep, if you enjoy your Jeep, whether you wheel it or not, Mm -hmm. it's still a status. And I really would hope that each and every one of you would think about that for a minute before you go off and go, well, that's not a real Jeep. 
Well, <laughs> I, I am going to buy leg real quickly yeah. on this whole subject because... Sorry, I'll get off my No, box. no, you're fine. <laughs> because I kind of felt that way. Like last show we did in show 180 where I talked about my low rider because, you know, my Jeep doesn't look as tall as yours. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can't you can't get caught up into that, you know, oh man, if this had 35s and small fenders and all this, that, you know, then the Jeep will be done. Then I can go out wheel, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I have had this lift on now since July and I haven't had it off. Well, I've had a couple of small places to pull off road. But I, ha- I built this with the intent to take it to trailer it. Yeah. Now things are a little off because of the GPW, but at the same time, I want to go out and enjoy my um, LJ once I get the clutch uh, throw up bearing fixed because <laughs> yes. it decided to go bleh on me. But I I want to take that step back because, you know, what I like is very similar to yours. Like I like that little bunny trail they have in the big canoe, mm-hmm. you know, where you had the, 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 the cabin area, the, the, the still. Even though we've been on it a few times, it, you know, I'm watching nature build up around it. It's mm-hmm. growing and, you know. It, and we only do it once a year. Yeah. So that helps too. And uh, is it cool? Yeah, it's got a little small water crossing. I know you, no one's getting in there in their Honda Civic. No, and actually that water crossing, remember last year, had changed rather drastically Mm -hmm. courtesy of a couple of hurricanes bringing enough water that the natural shelf for the creek crossing, because this is not a stream that's flat, folks. This particular stream comes down a waterfall, then comes down a rocky, dropping uh, Georgia mountain hillside, and there was a flat slab stone, if you know what I'm talking about, that you crossed on. and. Mm -hmm you didn't have to get very far to driver's side and you fell off that into three or four foot, which then tumbled down another four or five foot, which then tumbled down the rest of the mountainside. And um, a good third of that shelf stone broke away and Mm -hmm. washed down the hillside. And you're looking at that going, okay, I'm now more off camber. I'm on wet, slick rocks. And it actually was, that had a little bit of challenge. Could you make it easily? Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you screw up and get hurt? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the difficulty score is not that you had to put your Jeep in harm's way. It's that, well, if you didn't have a Jeep, other than walking, you're not getting across that. As you said, your Honda Civic wouldn't make it. The F-250 wouldn't make it. You know, even my wife's, you know, Quattro Mercedes that she loves so much, you know, it's got four wheel drive. Uh, I don't think it would go across there too well. Yeah. Um, I would love you the GPW on that bunny trail, though. Well, that's kind of what it made for. You just have to get yourself rigged up to tow it up there. Yeah, well, that that is on the docket this list. And now that I know that Chair's Jeep Fest uh, tickets are available, mm, I might be having a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Yep. Get out there and enjoy that time because, again, I just enjoy driving the Jeep. You know, again, while those events are nice and fun, I I, I, want to get to One Rock. Yeah. I want to get to, you know, the Tennessee or the the Tennessee Jeep Invasion, whatever, um, and Butler, PA. No, that's. Oh. That's the Bantam Bantam Jeep, Festival. Yeah. Jeep Heritage <laughs> Festival in Butler. Wow. You've been to the Tennessee the Jeep. The Tennessee. Yeah, uh, and that was actually fun because we got a chance. Smoky Mountain though, Jeep Invasion. Even though it wasn't wheeling. off wheeling, but it was cool to go to that church. Yeah. You we, know, I took him around Cades Cove Loop for those of you who've been up there in the uh, Pigeon Forge area. Mm-hmm. Um, and then snuck out the back gate uh, that takes you through a fire road, but it's a mountain cut access trail where some of those drops were thousands of feet. Um, they weren't vertical. They weren't, you know, Midwest drops, Right. but you would not have walked out of there because you would have gone down a greater than 45 degree slope through the trees for a couple of thousand feet. It would um, definitely take two boo-boo strips. Yeah. One hanging off the right hook of a helicopter and the one hanging off the <laughs> left hook of the helicopter to get your butt out of there. Your Jeep would probably become like we saw up there at yes. the K- at the uh, Amalakola Falls, Falls and down Ford. in Georgia, yeah. the Ford pickup truck sitting on the side of a hill nose down. And all I can think of is whoever came down, that they haven't even moved it off the park lot and it's not it's placed just there. It's resting in place. Because you're not getting it out of there. And no. can you imagine the ride down? Yeah. No. <laughs> first, first they said it a lot, then they did it. Yeah. <laughs> And then hopefully they were alive to clean up. Uh, no, they were in the woods. <laughs> yeah, that's just true. So at least the bear would know. Yeah. So uh, anywho, uh, sorry, this has been a slightly um, altered show. Nah, yeah, a little bit of a political statement here is just, folks, be kind to each other. That's yeah. all I'm trying to say is that we're all jeepers. Mm-hmm. And it really saddens me to hear people telling, you know, one jeeper to another, you're not a real jeeper. Yeah, really? What's a real jeeper? Yeah. If you have a Jeep, you're a real Jeeper. 
Mm-hmm. Even if it's a little Liberty on stock street <laughs> tires, you still have a Jeep logo. I agree with that. Yeah. Even the Renegade and the, and the Patriot, you know. Yeah, those are kind of fiats, but no. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're right. I couldn't resist no, the Jeep no. shot. No, uh, you know. We all started somewhere. We all start somewhere. I mean, my first Jeep was a Comanche. Yep. Yep. And, and back then, people turned their nose up in it. Now people would kill to have what I had. Yep. Like me. <laughs> I miss Don't that. you think three's enough? Sure. In a, in a yeah. family of two? <laughs> no, 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 a family of five, you know. We don't count the fur buddies. They don't drive. <laughs> okay, well, so, the two at the three. Uh, yeah, you're right. So anyway, <laughs> folks, I think we've beat this one uh, sufficiently. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you want to argue otherwise, mm-hmm. um, Scott will absolutely take the uh, emails from on the trail podcast at gmail.com but we do want your feedback let yep. us know what you think about that subject what you know what do you like to do do you consider yourself a real wheeler have you are you have you been frustrated with some of the new crowd because that's a somewhat somewhat I, I see that as some, some of the old grizzled veterans will get frustrated yeah you know especially like the duck thing it, again you either love it or you hate it you love your hate but at the end of the day they're having fun just let people have fun that's right you're having fun with, I will with the product absolutely watch you do 35 miles up a rock hill uh-huh. yeah 35 yeah. miles an hour up, and up, up a rock, rock hill yes we just saw one of our friends who owns a shop go right up the, the obstacle and i mean it was impressive as heck that you know boom, 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 and there he went mm-hmm. um and one of our other friends that we know really well went out on a on an easy trail, and, and all of a sudden his Jeep was dead because the electric fan decided to go let the magic smoke out and no more cooling. And the electric fan has left the chat, yes. Yeah, so, um, and it wasn't even on a really serious issue. So, love it or hate it, it's a Jeep, mm-hmm. and modified or stock, it's a Jeep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, owned by a guy or a girl or somebody undecided, it's still a Jilla Jeep, <laughs> even with all the ducks in the dash. It's still deep. <laughs> on the trail podcast at gmail.com. Bring it. <laughs> All uh, right, folks. I think uh, it's uh, quite deep enough in here, mm-hmm. and it's time to uh, <laughs> lock hubs for those of you who have them. And okay, if you don't, just put it in four low and let's hit the trail. Yeah, make sure to take nothing but pictures, memories, and your trash when you leave said trail because we want to keep these trails open for our friends, 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 and all the ducks on your dash. Right. Remember, you know, and there's a byline on that is next time you're at an event, if you see a Tread Lightly booth, go check them out. Absolutely. Hi, Don. Hi, (laughs) Don. All right, folks. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Proceeding has been provided for entertainment only. Proper service and repair procedures are vital to the safe, reliable operation of all motor vehicles, as well as personal safety of those performing those repairs. Standard safety procedures and precaution, including the use of safety goggles and proper tools and equipment, should be followed at all times to eliminate the possibility of personal injury or improper service which could damage the vehicle or compromise its safety. What he said. (laughs) Thanks a lot for listening, guys. You guys have a great day. Bye. (laughs) This has been a Bentaxel Media Production.